For this lesson, we are going to create a name tag, a name tag that we're going to size to fit on our pencil boxes in our classroom. Whether we use them in the classroom or not, this is still a fun little intro assignment to a couple basic tools on Google Draw. First thing to do, get into your Google Drive. This is important. Kids always get confused here. We're going to use Google Drawings. You need to start a new document, so click the New button. When you go down here, you won't see Google Drawings. It doesn't show up as one of their main platforms, so you need to click More. You don't even have to click. I just held my mouse over More, and it holds up a new drop-down menu right at the top is Google Drawings. That's the only way I've found to open Google Drawings. Once in, we're going to set up our canvas. This gray and white checkered area is called a canvas. Let's go to File, Page Setup, and I would like you to change the size of your canvas. We, even though it says standard four to three ratio, we are going to drop that down and make a custom. I would like it to be four by three inches. This is going to fit perfectly on the front of our pencil boxes in the classroom. Okay, so it didn't change much, but now it's in inches. So when I go to print it from you, it should print out the right size for your pencil box. Now, first up, we need to change this. This is transparent. There's nothing really here. That's why Google Drawing or many, many uh, digital art platforms give you this gray and white checkerboard to show you that there isn't a color here. This is kind of the universal language of blank. I'm going to right click. That will open this drop down menu. We're going to start by filling the background. To fill your background, it gives you color options. This is required. You need to make a custom colored background. I want it to be a gradient of your own creation. So right here, we're on the solid. It automatically opens up to the solid colors. We need to create a gradient, which means it's going to blend or fade from one color into another. So I'm going to click on gradient. And again, it gives you a bunch of just out of the box gradients that you could choose from. We are not choosing those. We're going to go down to custom and create our own. It starts you off with the basic gray box. When this box is highlighted, I can change the color here. So this is called a stop. This is the beginning of my color range. I'm going to change it. I would like it to be, well, none of these. I want it to be custom. Click custom again. You've got the world of colors here. You can slide this all over the place. I like that turquoisey green color. I'm going to go right there. Now, technically, this is the color. This gray bubble here is the color I'm working in. I don't want that. I want something green. But look at all the options for this teal. I can change that a hundred different ways. I want something lighter, but not something that hurts my eyeballs. So I'm going to go I'm just shifting it around and watching that color bubble. I like that. Transparency should be not transparent at all. I want it solid, so I'm sliding that over here. You know it's transparent, again, when you can see the gray and white checkers like I can on the left side here. So this is my first color stop. I'm going to hit OK. Now, it gives you a preview. This is what it's going to look like on my canvas. It's going to be the turquoise color to bleh, gray. We need to change the second color stop also. So I'm going to click on the other box at the opposite end and select the drop down. I would like it to like blend. Oh, wait, none of those. Hit custom. I was thinking of maybe a blue, bluish purple, something, maybe something like that. And again, my color is gray. I need to drag this bubble around until I'm happy with the color that's going to be the background. I don't want it to be too dark again. Let's go maybe there. Let's see how that looks. And it gives me a preview. And now I have this pretty gradation from turquoise down to blue. There is more you can play with here. You could add a gradient stop. I could change a color in here. I can make it have three colors along this route. I don't care to do that. It's up to you. I could change how this does the gradient. Instead of a 90 degree, I could change the angle of it and see, oh, I just flipped it. So play with some of those buttons. I can make it not linear, meaning a straight line. I could change that to be radial, like a circle. Mm, I think I'm going to stick with the linear, but these are options for you. So poke these buttons. There's a thousand different options. I'm happy with that. 
Now there is my background. I have filled the background with my own custom gradient that is required. Next up, you need your name. It's a name tag. We are not just typing our name in tiny and we're not using a text box. We are going to use word art. Type your name in here. Now, one other requirement that I'm about to give you is that you have to replace one of your letters with an image. <coughs> you have to replace one of your letters with an image. So you need to have a plan in your head before you do this. Good thing I already have a plan. So I'm going to replace the letter I in my name. I'll just do my last name. I'm going to replace the letter I with a paintbrush. So I'm going to put a space for the letter I. In fact, I'm going to go two spaces so I can make sure there's room and S. When I hit enter, there's my name with my space already provided. If you screwed that up, you just hit delete right away and you can redo your word box. The first time I did this, it took me like three tries because I could not make myself <laughs> leave out the letter I. It was really funny. From this point, it automatically gives you gray letters with a black outline. First up, remove the outline, unless you want it, but I won't grade you down if you keep it, but think about taking that off so you have solid letters. Next up, choose a color. What color do you want that? You're gonna go to the paint bucket, fill color. I'm actually gonna go with black. I would like black letters for this. And you also must change your font. Look at all your font options here. I like the permanent marker font. Seems artsy, it reminds me of using a Sharpie. I dragged it over. Remember if you are dragging, you should see this little icon instead of your mouse arrow, it should have a cross with arrows so you can know that you're moving. So I can move this up and down in my image box. I can also stretch it. That's the beauty of word art. I can take this and stretch these letters. I can make them fill the entire thing if I want. It's up to you how big you stretch it. But remember the focus here is your name. It's a name tag. Kind of want to center this a little bit. Okay, happy with that for now. I can always adjust it again later. Next up, you need to insert an image to replace one of your letters. So I left that blank spot for my letter. I'm going to go to insert. I want an image and I'm just going to steal one from the web. So I'm going to search the web. Now here is a very important trick. You need to use the word transparent when searching the web. This will give you images that don't have a background. We don't want a background. We're replacing the letter and I want to see my beautiful gradient background. So make sure you use that word transparent. You might even use transparent background. Let me see if I can find a paintbrush I like. All right, after spending way too long looking, I'm picking that paintbrush right there. When it gives you your image, it's gonna be huge. It fills up the whole page. It's just sort of an automatic feature on Google. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that corner. If I grab a side, I can really distort this image. I can make that paintbrush real skinny. It's up to you if you wanna do that. But if you'd like to keep it the same, we grab the corner when we're sizing an image, smaller or bigger. And to turn it to fill the I space of my name, I'm gonna grab this dot, this little loner dot, and when I hover over that dot, my mouse went from being this cross with arrows to a real skinny cross. That is telling me that I can grab and rotate without changing the image. I just turned it. I'm going to keep turning it because I want it to sit upright or slightly to the side. Now I'm going to drag it over. That's much too big to be my letter I, so I'm going to keep playing with it until I'm happy. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now my name says Collins, but the letter I is a paintbrush. Next up, you need to include an image that is behind your name. I'm again gonna go to insert, image, search the web. I am going to take away the word paintbrush. I'm gonna leave transparent because again, I want to see my background color that I created and I'm gonna look for a palette. Let's see if I can find a palette. I'd like just a palette, not a palette with paint brushes. Let's see what I can find. And it's going to come off huge. And on top of everything, my goodness, isn't that in the way? It's blocking everything. To change the order of things, when you're working in a Google drawing, we right click, make sure you're on the image, right click. We're going to go to 
order. This is a very important function. This item, this image, is sitting on top of everything in the digital world. To make it sit behind, I need to move it. I'm going to send it backward. Now watch what happens. Wait a minute. It only went behind the paintbrush. That's because the last thing I inserted into this image was the paintbrush. So it only went back one layer. It went behind the paintbrush, but it's still in front of the letters. I can do this again. I could just send it backwards. Whoopsies, look what happened. Do you see what I clicked on? I was clicked on my paintbrush. Let's make sure we clicked on the correct image. I can click order and I can send it backward one more time. I could also send it to the back, which would do the same thing at this point because it is gonna send it behind my letters. Now, I'm not exactly crazy about how that palette is. Let me make sure I'm on, holy cow, there's the palette. It's too big. I'm gonna shrink it down and let's see. Nope, I just moved my words, undo. That's the undo button up there. You're gonna use it a lot. I would like to turn it just a little bit and I'll make it a little bit bigger again. And I think I'm gonna slide it over. So I'll, I just grabbed the wrong box, careful of that. And that's the wrong box, there we go. I am going to Drag it over a little bit more to the left. Okay, now I'm happy. Last job, so you have your name using word art, a letter that has been replaced by a transparent image, another image that is behind your letter, so that's two images. I've got a second image. And lastly, I need to include a border. The border is required for this assignment. I'm gonna, again, insert an image from the web unless you have some amazing borders already created in your drive, which you probably don't. You can search border. Again, stick with transparent so you don't end up with all kinds of stuff. And you'll get all kinds of borders like this, some basic stuff. You can use any of those that make you happy. The other thing you can do is create your own border. I don't wanna do that. I would like to have a I want a colored pencil. Oops, not a cloth pencil. Colored pencil. Transparent. Let's see what I get. And that orange will look good on the blue. Now, once again, it's going to come out huge. I don't want it huge. Get smaller, please. And since it's vertical, I'm going to go ahead and just drag it over here. I want it to be long and skinny. It needs to fill up to be the border. Well, maybe not that long. Give myself a little bit of room here. But it could be skinnier, right? It is a pencil. Doesn't need to be quite that thick. Okay. Once again, it's sitting in front of my letter. I need it in the back. So I'm going to right click, order, oops, order, send it to the back. I want it behind everything. It's a border. I want it to be behind my letters. My letters are going to be in front. I am going to right click again to copy this. And once again, I can right click and hit paste. Now I've got two of them. I'm gonna drag it over to be my other border. Just for artistic sake, I'm gonna flip it around. I'm gonna grab that loner dot and I'm gonna rotate it. In fact, wouldn't this be fun? I don't think I'm gonna go with a perfectly straight border. I can go ahead and leave it a little angled. It's my border. I want it to be angled. I'm going to, again, I have to switch that order and send it to the back so it's behind the letters. Because I angled that one, I'm going to angle this one. All right, and I can just right click again and paste one more time. I need a top. Borders have to go on all four sides. You decide how you want it to angle. It should connect or mostly connect. So I'm going to stretch this pencil. and Maybe change him a little bit bigger. He should be filling up. The border now it's getting a little crazy with the angles isn't it starting to give me a headache i want to send it up more okay and it needs to go in the back right click order make sure that it is sent to the back i guess it didn't matter in that case it will matter down here last time right click paste it's still the guy that i have on my clipboard they call it and i'm going to turn it this way this time 
send it over here and I'm gonna just play around with the size, get it placed. And again, I'm gonna make sure that it is in the background. Right now it's overlapping things and I want my border to be in the back. So I go to order, send it to the back. And now look, it's behind my palette, it has a little shadow on it even, which looks kind of cool. Whoops, I need to grab the wrong thing. That happens a lot, I tend to grab the wrong box and you gotta click around until you find it. I'm gonna straighten that out. I actually don't think I like the angled. I'll just click it down. There we go. And that is my name tag that I could put on my art box in the classroom. When you're done with this, you need to post it onto your Google drawing assignment on Google Classroom. First off, let's give it a title. Please title it with your last name. And then I'm going to call it name tag. I like to save mine in a particular file. In your drive, it tends to get lost. If you don't have a file set up, that's gonna be a problem. Hopefully you do by now. I have a file just called drawings that I created. That way I know where all my Google drawings are and I don't have to look everywhere in Google Drive to find them. So I'm gonna move it there. Now it is saved in Google Drawings for me. I've titled it with my last name and name tag. And then I can find this document to attach it into Google Classroom. When you go into Google Classroom, you're gonna to go to the assignment. You're gonna click Turn In. First, you need to attach your work. Make sure you see the little icon of your image before you hit the Turn In button. 